Lesson 7 FM Synthesis and Introduction to Filters. In this tutorial, I am going to present you with frequency modulation synthesis and some useful techniques to gain control over the generated sound. Frequency modulation, or FM for short, is a change in the frequency of one signal caused by modulating it with another signal. Frequency modulation, together with amplitude modulation and additive synthesis, is among the easiest and best sounding algorithms to implement due to the capability of generating complex waveforms. In the audio field, complex waveforms are perceived as more rich and defined in terms of sound due to their high number of harmonics. In the patch we are going to implement, the frequency of a sinusoidal carrier wave is varied continuously with the output of a sinusoidal modulating oscillator. The modulator is then added to the constant base frequency of the carrier. What does that mean? Let's look at it together by opening a brand new patch. We know that we need two oscillators, so let's create them. We also need a couple of number box objects to set the FM carrier frequency and the FM modulator. Let's also use some comments to remind us what we are doing. We know that the signal coming from the modulator needs to be added to the base frequency of the FM carrier. So let's take the number box and use it to set the FM carrier frequency. And instead of connecting it directly to the carrier oscillator, we need to add this number to the signal coming from the FM modulator. How do we do that? We need a plus tilde, which we are going to connect like this. I didn't set the right operand yet. That should be the signal coming from the FM modulator, as we said, because this signal needs to be multiplied beforehand. So let's do it by using a well-known multiplier. Why are we doing this? Because in FM synthesis, the amplitude of the modulator determines the intensity or the effectiveness of the effect. We can now take another number box to control the intensity and also comment this. Great, this is the algorithm that implements FM, but we cannot play with it yet because we need to build the volume control and the exit path to the sound card. So let's get it done. By now, you are quite an expert. Instead of creating this from scratch, let's copy some objects from the patch we developed to implement the additive synthesis. So I select the slider, the line and its message, the multiplier, the DAC, and I copy and paste them into the new patch. Now I can close the additive synthesis patch, otherwise when we turn the audio on, this old patch would also sound. Let's connect the volume control like this. And now we can listen to how FM sounds. As you can hear, the sounds we are producing are richer than before.
Let's move one step further. We could say that the sound we get from this synthesis technique is so rich that we might want to use only a part of it. What am I talking about? I am talking about filtering. What does it mean to filter? Well, filtering means that at the moment we have a signal rich with different frequencies and we want to filter some of them, but how? Using a device that passes frequencies within a certain range and attenuates, in terms of volume, frequencies that are outside of that range. An object capable of this is VCF tilde. Let's create it, initialized with 1, and check the help file. As you can see, VCF, or Voltage Control Filter, has two outlets. The rightmost outlet passes all the frequencies below a certain threshold, which is set by the central inlet. This behavior takes the name of Low Pass Filter. The leftmost inlet takes the signal that has to be filtered. The leftmost outlet let's pass all the frequencies around a center frequency. This behavior is called bandpass filtering and is the one we are looking for. This is all we need to know for the moment. Digital filters are a huge and complex topic and the behaviors we described above are not the only available ones a filter algorithm is capable of. Nor is VCF the only available filter object inside pure data. There are actually several other kinds of filter behaviors, such as high-pass, notch, morphing filters, and so on. For a basic understanding of the topic, the Wikipedia page, Filter Signal Processing, is an excellent starting point. Let's go back to our patch and integrate this new object into the patch as follows. We use the first outlet because we want to use it as a bandpass filter. Why do we want to use a bandpass filter? Because since the incoming signal is so rich, we would like to highlight different frequency ranges each time we change the center frequency. We still cannot hear anything because we need to set the center frequency. In order to do this, it wouldn't be enough to use a number box, as we've done up to now, because the center frequency needs to come from a signal, not a number. But how can we transform a number into a signal? We need to use this object, sig tilde, and connect it like this. Now the number in the number box is transformed into a signal that oscillates at this rate in the range from minus 1 to plus 1. We are now ready to play with it. The results are really rich and interesting and it's astonishing to see how much we achieved starting from scratch and just by using basic objects. You should be proud of yourself. With this tutorial ends the first part of the series. From the next tutorial onward, we will see how we can control sound generation using data coming from external sensors, such as those available in smart devices. The idea is to use the synthesis techniques we implemented so far and control them using a smart device instead of mouse and keyboard, with the goal of coupling body movements and control over the synthesis process. Don't be afraid, it will be easier than you might be thinking.